Okay guys, I hear ya. What's going on YouTube? It's ya boy, Brendy Boy, back at it again with another Fallout 4 video. And in this video, I'll be showcasing a giant collection of mods to completely overhaul the user interface and heads-up display for Fallout 4. The main issue with Fallout 4's user interface is that it simply takes way too long to navigate, and there's just not enough shortcuts or quality of life features. Sorting through your inventory especially is the biggest time waster. Not only that, but the aesthetic of the menus is rather bland and forgettable. But of course, that's where mods come in. This comprehensive list includes over 50 mods in total. It covers almost every aspect of the user interface and heads-up display, some of which add in completely new features to provide convenience and ease of use. I've mashed them all together to create a custom interface which combines modern and classic Fallout aesthetics, so this setup will provide a perfect mix of nostalgia and innovation. If you're looking for the ultimate Fallout 4 UI makeover, then this is definitely the video for you. Let's go ahead and get into it. I'll start in chronological order. First up, we'll be dealing with the main menu and loading screens. This main menu replacer is called Nuclear Fire. Instead of seeing the same old trailer every time you open the game, you'll now get a simple logo with some particle effects. It looks pretty awesome, while also keeping true to the theme of Fallout. In addition to that, I'm also using another mod called Disable Creation Club, which does exactly as the title suggests. It completely disables and removes the ability to access the Creation Club from the main menu. It also deletes the Fallout 4 updates that usually show up in the top right corner. So this is easily one of the best mods of all time right here. Now I don't have to worry about accidentally clicking on the Creation Club tab, nor do my eyes have to bear witness to those useless updates that only pollute the screen. If you've been paying attention, then you've also noticed that my font is a little different, and you may recognize it if you're a Fallout veteran. That's because I'm using a mod which adds in the classic Monofonto font from Fallout 3 and New Vegas. After installing this one, it really made me realize just how much I missed that old text. I feel like the classic font is more captivating and easier to read, while also looking way more stylish compared to vanilla Fallout 4. To complement the classic font, you should also get the classic UI sounds. Now that's the type of ASMR I could listen to all day. And if you really love New Vegas that much, then you should go ahead and turn your UI orange. Here's what my settings look like. Keeping with that same theme, let's move on to the loading screens. In New Vegas, the load screens were static and showcased a random piece of artwork, but Fallout 4 took a different route and has these interactive load screens which showcase a 3D model. It's kind of like a toy to mess around with as you wait for the game to load, so it is kind of cool. But if you prefer the old style, then you should try out a mod called Random Concept Art Loading Screen. It ingeniously makes use of Fallout 4's concept art by turning it into load screens. In total, there's 23 beautiful pieces of art for you to admire as you wait for a giant 600 plus mod list to load in. Or maybe that's just me. Just make sure to install the requirement for this mod called Automated Loading Screen Replacer. And that's the framework mod you'll need for the random loading screens to actually work. As a side note though, this won't replace new loading screens that are added in by mods. You'll either have to do that yourself or simply delete them. You know, playing Fallout 4 is like being in a casino. The goal is to keep you in there as long as possible, so you can give Todd Howard all your sweet, sweet atom bucks. So there's no clocks or windows to let you know how much time has passed. You can easily play Fallout for several hours straight without even realizing. So if you ever find yourself in that situation, then you should install the Clock Widget mod. It's a simple mod that adds in a little clock to the bottom right hand corner of all your load screens, which shows your real life local time. That's all it does. It's a great tool to have to seamlessly keep track of the real world time, all without interfering with your gameplay or forcing you to minimize out of the game. Alright, now that we finally loaded into the game, we can start to get into the good stuff. But first, you'll need a couple of basics. The mod configuration menu is a must have. You'll need it to configure the rest of your mods in your load order, but I'm sure most of y'all already have it installed, so I'll spare you the details. Even if you do already have it, chances are you may not have some of the much needed upgrades to the MCM. The MCM Booster is a simple mod which magically speeds up your load times into the configuration menu itself. It may not be an issue for those with small load orders, but for me, it can take a solid 10 to 15 seconds to actually get into the MCM. But this mod somehow speeds up the process, and now it only takes a brief moment to load in. Don't ask me how, just know that it just works. Another great tool to save yourself time is the MCM Settings Manager. This mod allows you to save all your MCM settings into a preset and load them later on a different save. By default, all your MCM settings would reset when starting a new playthrough, and you'd have to redo the settings for all your mods. And that could be quite a hassle if you have multiple characters. But like I said, this mod fixes that. The other essential mod to pick up is called HUD Framework. It's a necessary framework mod that allows other mods to add new HUD elements to the game. 
so you'll absolutely have to install this one before going any further. And with that, let's talk about all those different HUD mods I use. The centerpiece for my setup is Fall UI HUD. This mod boasts a completely customizable heads-up display. Seriously, you can move and adjust every piece of HUD to your liking. You can change the size, position, visibility, rotation, and even give it a 3D effect. There's lots of options with this one, and it's honestly the best HUD overall mod out there. You don't even need to worry about installing a preset to make it look nice, because you can make your own. The mod also adjusts the quick loot feature by showing what materials the items are made out of. Along with that, it adjusts the messages you get in the top left corner. You can set it to where the messages scroll by faster, and control how many messages can be seen on the screen at once. But the big question everyone has been asking is, how do you get the HUD to look like Fallout 3 and New Vegas? Well, the answer is obvious. I'm using the Fallout 3 slash New Vegas HUD preset mod. Specifically, I downloaded the small version because I prefer my HUD to be small and non-intrusive. After installing both Fall UI HUD and this preset, you'll then have to go into the MCM, Fall UI HUD, then Layout, and then simply apply the preset. It's that easy. There may be lots of other HUD presets out there, but I 100% prefer this one over anything else because it has that iconic Fallout aesthetic. As you may have noticed though, I did make some changes, including shifting a few things around and changing the crosshair to be a dot. Also, I set the ammo widget to be invisible. That's because I had to make room for another mod. The second main part that affects my heads-up display is a part of a mod called Ammo and Weapon UI Expanded. It adds in several new HUD elements. The most prominent one is the ammunition display. Instead of just showing numbers, this mod will show you which ammo type you're using, along with an icon of the weapon. Not only that, but now there's a permanent icon for explosives, so you can easily keep track of them without having to check. In addition to that, there's a few other icons, which include a suppressor indicator, a player icon, your name, your current level, along with a widget to show whether you are crouching or standing. These two little boxes down here are specifically used to display the status of other mods from 2NX. The one on the right is for night vision goggles, which are added in by the XM2010 mod. You'll have to have that one installed if you want to use this specific night vision. As a bonus, the Ammo UI Expanded mod adds in an animation to go along with those night vision goggles, which looks absolutely fantastic. The box on the left is supposed to be related to a scope swapping feature, but I personally don't use it, so in its place, I decided to have my gas mask icon there, but more on that later. If you happen to not like a couple of the icons, or if you just want to move them around, then you can always turn them off entirely or adjust their position within the configuration menu. Also, this specific version of the Ammo UI HUD is not available on the Nexus. It's on 2 Nexus Patreon, and it will cost you a dollar to unlock the download. But I didn't even hesitate to pick it up. This mod is well worth a dollar considering all the unique features it adds in. You may have also noticed these flashy pop-up medals on my screen, and that's from another mod made by 2 Nexus called Kill Tips and Hit Sound. Essentially, this mod makes the heads-up display more like Call of Duty by adding in a kill feed along with hit marker sounds. The goal of this mod is to give you better feedback when you hit and kill an enemy, so it may not be super realistic, but if you like more of an arcade FPS feel, then you should definitely try this one out. You can choose between either the pop-up medals or a regular kill feed. The medals are pretty big, but they do show an awesome looking graphic with the distance of your kill, which makes sniping all the more satisfying when you pull up that long range headshot. But if that's too flashy for you, then the kill feed may be a better option. It's simpler and not quite as intrusive. The only downside to this mod is that I noticed that the kill feed can get pretty laggy depending on how many enemies you kill at once, and if there's any other scripts running in the background. But other than that, it's a pretty neat mod. And while I'm on the topic of arcade-like HUD, you may also want to try out two other mods called Nameplates Floating Health Bars, as well as Floating Damage. They're pretty self-explanatory, and they both complement each other very well. The Nameplates mod gives every NPC a health bar above their head. Vanilla Fallout 4 only shows the health of an enemy you're currently looking at, so this mod will come in handy when needing to track the health of multiple enemies at once. Meanwhile, the Floating Damage mod will display exactly how much damage you've dealt to an NPC. It's a fairly useful tool if you're curious to see exactly how much damage you're dealing to an opponent, especially after armor is factored in. I will say though, I personally don't use those last three mods anymore, because I'm trying to go for a more grounded experience now, but they are great mods nonetheless, and if that's your style, then you'll surely enjoy them. Something else that kind of bugged me about Fallout 4 is that you really don't know how your followers are doing. Sure, you can ask them in conversation how things are going, but I'm talking about their health. Quite literally just their health bar. You can't see it. And that can be a problem. I know every time I bring a follower with me, they end up going down in combat and I completely forget about them because nobody told me they were bleeding out. If that happens to you too, then the companion status head mod is a must have. This one will simply show you your followers health bars. By default, it looks like this, and it is kind of bland, so if you want the fancy smancy remastered version, 
then make sure to get that one from 2NX. It redoes the entire look and gives each companion a unique icon, which boasts a beautiful art style. If you want to move this widget around, you'll have to do it through console commands, which are linked on the mod page. Another great mod to keep track of things is called Active Effects on HUD. The main feature is that it displays the effects of consumables on your screen. Chems, drinks, food, or even diseases, it'll actively show you all these buffs and or debuffs at all times. It's yet another useful utility mod to have, so you know exactly how much longer is left until a certain effect wears off. But that's not all. It also adds in this little line of icons that I placed above my AP bar. It shows my carry weight, stem packs, right away, purified water, and caps. These are all essential items to keep track of, so instead of having to check my pip boy every time, they are now always there on my screen. This feature is turned off by default, so make sure to head over to the configuration menu and turn these witches on, and then you can move them around to your liking. That's basically the bulk of all my HUD mods, but there's still a few more to go. Up next is a mod called HUD Caps. This one adds in a unique HUD feature that was seen in none other than Fallout 76. That is, whenever you picked up caps, a big HUD widget would show up in the middle of your screen and tell you how many you picked up, along with your total amount of caps. It's nothing too crazy, nor is it really necessary, but I do genuinely like this mod because it activates neurons in my monkey brain that make me feel good. It's almost like the game is motivating you to grind for more caps, just so that you can spend them on absurdly high-priced blueprints, legendaries, and even fast traveling. Oh, sorry. That was 76 I was talking about. And now that we got all these mods affecting the heads-up display, you may want to take a break from it all and turn them off temporarily when you don't need them. The Immersive HUD mod is an excellent choice for just that. By the press of a hotkey, you can toggle the HUD on and off, or you can set it to where the HUD only shows up given certain conditions. For example, the health bar will only be visible while in combat or when under 75% health. You get the idea. It's all configurable in the MCM. I'd also like to note that this isn't compatible with the ammo and weapon UI mod from earlier, but that mod has its own toggle button, so you won't have to worry about that. In case you were wondering about the visible critical bar at the bottom of my screen, that's from the VAFS Redux mod. It's an alternative to the vanilla VAT system. Instead of having the computer aim for you, this mod swaps it out for a bullet time mechanic, which I think is way more fun and engaging to use. In the settings, you can set the critical bar to be visible under certain circumstances. Now, I personally prefer for it to only be visible while I'm using VAFs. That's all I gotta say for this one, moving on. Before I move on to the user interface, let's talk about equipment related HUD. Although I do tend to forget about power armor and leave them stranded out in the wasteland, I didn't forget when it comes to this list. I've actually got two options for you to choose from. The first one is called Immersive Power Armor HUD. It adds in a very immersive helmet overlay to all power armor. You can choose between either a T45 or Raider overlay, but that's it. Every Power Armor helmet will then use that same exact overlay. It's a wonderful mod either way, and I used it for months, but now there's a new mod out which adds in more variety. It's called Complete Power Armor HUD Overlays. As you can see, it's got unique overlays for T45, T51, T60, and X01 Power Armor. This mod also sports higher visibility, so you can actually see what you're shooting at all the while still getting the immersive feeling of being in a bulky suit of armor. To get the mod to work though, you'll have to download its required master file called Power Armor HUD Switcher, so don't forget that one. A couple of things to note by the way, I noticed that switching the helmet while in Power Armor crashed my game, so you should probably avoid doing that too. And number two, this doesn't include overlays for modded Power Armors. Nonetheless, it's quite an immersive mod and it gives each vanilla Power Armor helmet some much needed uniqueness and character. Something that also affects the Power Armor overlay is the Gas Mask of the Wasteland mod. In short, it adds in a bunch of functioning gas masks to Fallout 4, which you will have to use to protect your lungs from irradiated air. There's actually a few different settings you can choose from, which range from hardcore to easy. But anyway, I'm here to talk about the display specifically. This mod does add in a first person gas mask overlay, which is only active while wearing a gas mask or if you are in Power Armor. You'll even notice that the gas mask gets damaged as you get hit, so make sure to repair them often, unless you like the aesthetic of a cracked gas mask. To be fair, it does look pretty badass, just don't let it break, or else you'll die. It's not just that, the gas mask overlay also includes effects such as blood splatter, dirt, snow, and rain, so you'll have to wipe your mask from time to time to clear your screen of all that gunk. To keep track of the status of your mask, the mod adds in a widget to your heads-up display. It shows the condition of your mask and its filters. If the mask is blinking red, then that's how you know it's currently being used, so don't take it off when you see this. Overall, it's an awesome mod, and it adds in tons of immersion to your game. There's lots of functions I didn't talk about, so you should try the mod out for yourself to see all that it has to offer. By default, the Gas Mask mod does not come with a configuration menu, nor do plenty of other mods. 
Usually, these mods add in hollow tapes or some other method to configure their settings, which is rather inconvenient. So, for that, I would heavily recommend you to download the MCM settings series. There's patches for several popular mods which don't have a configuration menu. These little add-ons will simply help you configure these mods more conveniently, so if you have any of these mods, then you'll definitely want to pick up these patches to save yourself from having to fiddle with holotapes. And with that, we can now transition into the user interface. I'll start with a subsection of mods that focus on adding in quick access menus. Like I was saying before, one major design flaw in Fallout 4's user interface is the lack of quick access menus. Other games of the same caliber already have these systems in place. A popular method is usually something like a wheel menu, which allows you to conveniently select from a wide array of items. You can probably guess what this next mod is called. It's the Fallout 4 wheel menu. That simple. As you can see, it adds in a fully functioning and well-designed wheel menu. After assigning a hotkey, you can open the wheel menu at any time you please. And by default, it will slow down the game to give you a little bit of time to make a decision, but it will not pause the game. From the wheel menu, you can swap weapons and take consumables, all without the hassle of pulling out your Pip-Boy. Originally, the wheel menu looks like this, and again, if you want the remastered version, then look no further than to an X. I'm not sure why, but the download for the wheel menu retexture is actually a part of the QMW mod. Don't ask questions, just download it. And while you're here, you might as well go ahead and download the Quick Modification Weapon mod. This lovely mod adds in a new way to modify your weapons while on the go. After assigning a hotkey, you'll then be able to pull out a backpack out of nowhere and begin working on your weapons. It allows you to swap out several accessories, including lasers, sights, underbarrels, and muzzles. But not every attachment is available. I don't know if this is intended or a bug, but you will be able to swap out attachments even if you don't have them, so it's kind of like a cheat menu too. I should also mention that this mod doesn't work with vanilla weapons. It only works with a select amount of modded guns, which are listed on the mod page. The list includes dozens of popular guns, and it's consistently updated too, so that's the good news. So now we have quick access to consumables and weapons, but what about armor? Well, for that, we have the Quick Change Armor mod. Just like the previous mods, after pressing an assigned hotkey, a new menu will pop up. But this one will bring you into third person and show your character. You can then scroll through your attire and easily change in or out of clothes, all the while seeing what it looks like. No longer do you have to go back and forth in between your Pip-Boy to look as your outfit changes. With this mod, you can do it all in real time. So those last three mods will surely help speed up your inventory management, but ultimately, you will have to access your Pip-Boy and other menus at some point, so let's overhaul those two. The main UI overhaul to get is called Fall UI. It's actually split into three main parts, along with some other small add-ons, so I'll divide it up and cover them as we go. First up is the inventory. Fall UI massively improves the inventory menu in every aspect, and it fully optimizes the performance for a PC. There's tons of little changes and tweaks too, but I'll just get the big ones. The most noticeable change right off the bat is that it makes the menus bigger, which then allows for more items to be visible in one column. So now, you don't have to do as much scrolling around to find your items. Even if you still have trouble, you can always press the F key and type in exactly what you're looking for. You can fully customize the mod to your liking, where you can change the size of the text and turn on other optional features, which include setting a custom inventory color, changing the design and font of the menus, and turning on new columns which provide more information about the items in your inventory. As a little add-on, I'd also suggest you download the Extra Item Info mod. It's somewhat obsolete because of Fall UI, but I still use it because it includes information like your magazine capacity and the VAT's cost. The other main part about Fall UI is that it includes compatibility for inventory sorting. But for that part to work, you should install an inventory sorting mod. I used to use an old one called Vowel Sorting, but now I'm using the Fall UI sorter. Whichever one you use, sorter mods will give every item a special tag, which are used for classification and organization. It'll help you find items a whole lot easier because now they are all grouped into their own categories. If you want the items to have these special icons, then you'll have to get that as a separate mod. Additionally, if you want your quest to be organized, then you should also pick up the quest tags mod. Just like the items in your inventory, it'll sort the quest depending on which faction they are related to and give them a fitting icon to match. Before I move on, I'd like to note that these sorting mods don't always work with modded items and quest. You'll either have to find a patch for that, or simply do it yourself in Fallout 4 edit. But anyway, let's move on to the next section, the workbench. Just like with the inventory, the Fall UI workbench mod improves the menus for all crafting stations. It's got the same theme as the Fall UI inventory mod. It'll allow you to see more items in the menu, and you can search for items by pressing the F key. Additionally, you can now cook up multiples of an item instead of having to spam the cook button 20 times. Another neat feature is that you can edit modded items in the workbench and give them a tag so that they'll work with the sorter mod from earlier. 
You know, crafting in the workbench requires the utmost precision and perception. Yet in the vanilla game, it's hard to actually see what you're working on due to the annoying colored highlight and background blur. So if you want to clear that up, then I urge you to download these next two mods. Crafting Highlight Fix and Small Blur Crafting Screen Background. With both of those, the unnecessary highlight and blur will be removed from the game. And you can see clearly what you're working on. And with that, the workbench menu is now fully remastered and doesn't make your eyes bleed. On to the map now. I've got just a couple for this one. Fall UI strikes yet again. This time with a version to overhaul the map. It adds in several convenient functions to help you navigate the Commonwealth. If you ever have an issue trying to find a location, you can now look it up on a list by either scrolling or searching for it directly. You can even filter the list to only include settlements if you'd like. In the MCM, you can set certain locations as favorites for quick access and configure a couple other options. You can change the size and color of the map markers too. Additionally, the map now supports high-res retextures and you can fully zoom in or out as much as you'd like. This particular map retexture mod I'm using is called Satellite Color World Map Combo. It replaces the monochrome map with a satellite version, and it also includes little colored icons which are collectibles for you to pick up. It'll show you where all the bubbleheads, magazines, and power armor frames are, so it may spoil some things, but it's a nice convenient mod to have because you were probably just going to look them up on the Fallout wiki anyway. By the way, this mod isn't available on the Nexus anymore. Not sure why, but I did find a link for it on the place that shan't be named. Anyway, moving on. To wrap up the Fall UI series, there's three more miscellaneous mods to download. Number one, better confirm boxes. It simply improves the confirm messages you get when doing actions such as scrapping an item. The vanilla message boxes were kind of wonky and annoying, but with this mod, the confirm messages are now much easier to deal with. You can even disable them entirely, because as we all know, real men don't second guess themselves. Number two, better sleep and wait menu. That's exactly what it does. It improves the sleep and wait menus by adding in a couple more options. You can wait till a target time, which is set at dawn, noon, dusk, and midnight, or even wait a couple weeks straight by using the calendar. So this is a pretty useful mod if you're looking to go into hibernation. Number three, simple wait anywhere. By the press of an assigned hotkey, this mod will allow you to wait anywhere out in the wasteland. For some odd reason, Fallout 4 doesn't allow you to do this, and you have to find a piece of furniture to sit down first. But now, this mod makes the waiting mechanic more like Skyrim, so you can stand out in the middle of nowhere for 24 hours straight like a true maniac. And that wraps up everything to do with the Fall UI series. It's a lot of mods, so I hope you were able to keep up. But we're not done yet. There's still some aspects of the UI we haven't gotten to. Here's a few extras to complete the overhaul. You may have noticed throughout the video that my pause menus are no longer pause menus. That is, they no longer freeze the game when I pull up the main menu and my pit boy. That is from the Fall Souls mod. It completely overhauls Fallout 4 and turns it into Dark Souls. Not really. All it does is remove the pausing feature from all the menus, just like in Dark Souls. So there's no more safe haven. You can't escape to your pit boy and freeze time mid-combat and then comfortably browse through your wares. You're now bound by the inevitable flow of time. So why would you want to install this mod? For immersion, of course. It's pretty nice to see the world still moves as you sort through your pit boy and it indirectly makes combat a little more challenging, so you'll want to make sure to favorite certain items ahead of time, or you can always rely on the wheel menu from earlier. If your mom happens to call you for dinner while you're in a dungeon, you can still pause the game, but you'll have to configure that part in the MCM first. I didn't forget about the level up menu. In fact, I've had this one for years now. This is the level up menu extended. It replaces the Fallout 4 perk chart with a more classic level up menu. While I certainly did like the vanilla perk chart, there's one main issue with it. That is, it doesn't allow for compatibility with mods that add in new perks. There would be no way of actually unlocking those perks via the vanilla menu, but that's the point of this mod. It allows for as many perks as you want, and I would suggest using a perk overhaul to go along with it, but I'll save that for another video. So now, we have the classic font, the classic HUD, and the classic perk menu. But what about one of the most important features in Fallout? The dialogue. Well, I don't have a mod which improves the writing, but I do have a mod which improves the dialogue menu. This is the extended dialogue interface. It gets rid of that ugly compass style dialogue UI and replaces it for a more classic version. It allows for you to see exactly what your character is going to say instead of some vague prompt. What's really neat about this dialogue mod is that it shows you icons depending on the dialogue that you choose. So bartering will show a money bag, an exclamation mark will be used to get a quest, a question mark will ask a question, a colored speech bubble is a persuasion attempt, and the door icon is to exit the conversation. 
The mod also gets rid of the hard-coded 4 dialogue options, so you won't get needless repeats, and you can now access more options than just 4, should it be available. It's a huge improvement overall, and there's really no reason to not download this one. For another small improvement, and to skip dialogue entirely, you can use the Quick Trade mod to instantly access the barter menu by way of hotkey. It's another small change, but it'll save you time from having to initiate a whole conversation just to trade with people. And for the last menu to overhaul, the Character Creation Screen, also known as the Looks Menu. This mod expands upon the vanilla character creation screen by adding in an actual menu to scroll through. Now, you don't have to click on your character's face to customize it. You can also save your character into a preset and load it on a different save. This mod also acts as a framework to allow other mods to add more customizability, including overlays and tattoos. If you want to make further adjustments and truly carve into your character like a marble statue, then you should get the extended facial sculpting add-on. It'll allow you to further manipulate the bones in your character's face, so your character can truly be unique and beautiful. Or, if you don't like taking the time to make your own tactical big titty waifu, then you can always download someone else's preset from the Nexus. While I'm on that topic, that reminds me, Fallout is sexist. That's right, there's just no female representation. How inconsiderate. It really baffles me, especially since the majority of you guys play as girls. If that's the case, then you ought to download the Vault Girl mod to fully immerse yourself. It'll replace the Vault Boy animations with a Vault Girl. It carries the same art style as the vanilla game, so it fits right in and doesn't seem out of place. It covers most of the main animations, but some of the higher tier perks have been left out. Nonetheless, the main bases are covered, so it does make for quite the immersive addition. On the other hand, if you're a male character, then you can get a mod which adds color to the Vault Boy. It'll go along nicely if you have the rest of your UI colored. Is it lore friendly? No, but I don't care. I like pretty colors. That's about it for that one. And that ends that section. Now on to the last one. Here's a few utility mods that may be of great use. So if you're like me, and you install gun mods constantly, but don't want to take the time to actually find them, then you're probably just going to cheat them into the game. But it's a rather annoying process because you have to find the item code for that specific item. Instead of doing all that nonsense, you can install the in-game ESP Explorer instead. Basically, it's like a full-on cheat menu, which allows you to browse through every mod you have and then yoink out any item from that mod. It works well for the vanilla game too, so you can easily cheat on ammo and junk as well. Of course, I don't actually recommend this for a genuine playthrough, because that's literally just cheating. But if you have a save file you'd like to use for just testing mods, then this is a very handy menu to have. But in some cases, you may have to use the console to enter some commands, so you might as well get the better console mod. The main shtick here is that you can now click on an NPC to get their special code, and if you control click, you'll be able to browse through all their hidden stats. A little bit niche, but hey, it may come in handy. And lastly, the final mod on this list is what I use to make thumbnails, the Fallout 4 Photo Mode. It adds in a working camera feature to the game, which is heavily inspired by the same mechanic seen in Fallout 76. It's a wonderful tool to take breathtaking screenshots, and after accessing it, it'll automatically put you into a free cam and pause the game, where you can then zoom in, zoom out, go up and down, and rotate the camera to get that perfect angle. Sure, you could just use the free cam command, but this mod has a user-friendly interface, which has more features, so there's just no competition in my book. And finally, that concludes the most comprehensive overhaul for Fallout 4's user interface and heads-up display. It was certainly a huge list, and it surprised me to find out that I used that many mods for the UI and HUD alone. I hope you're not too overwhelmed, especially if you're new to modding. It can be rather daunting to install that many mods at once, so please, take your time and don't rush. I know that all too well. I've been modding the game for years, and it's best not to rush the modding process, nor the video process either. This video especially took a long time to make much longer than it should have. In fact, this is the most time I've ever put into a single video thus far. I started making it a few weeks ago, and I've been recording and editing it throughout the month of January, so that's why my tone is a little different throughout the video, in case you didn't notice that. So yeah, this video took a while, but I say it's well worth it since so many people were asking for it. I sincerely hope you all enjoyed the video and found it to be helpful, and I thank you for watching the whole thing. So go ahead and desecrate that like button, and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any mods which you think should be added onto this list, then let me know, and leave a comment down below, along with a link to the mod, and I'll check it out. Other than that, remember to hit the bell icon to stay tuned, and join the Discord too, if you're looking for a chill community to chat with. And with that, I'll see y'all 
in the next video. Okay, let's see what we're working with. Whoa, nice cock. That's all it does. That's a creep. What the fuck? Uh, what the fuck? What the fuck, Richard? Let me just, just snort some cocaine real quick. <coughs> oh, fuck. Yeah! Mm. Oh yeah, baby! Let's do this! Yeah!